So this talk is about the ultra plonk arithmetization, which is currently used in Halo 2. So ultra plonk is an extension of plonk and like any arithmetization, it's a way to express statements in the form of relations between variables. And once we have relations between variables, um, that's amenable um, to be expressed as polynomials, which we can then commit to. And once we have a commitment scheme, we can instantiate an accumulation scheme. So this flowchart is basically what Halo 2 is. But my point here is actually that if you wanted to substitute in your own commitment scheme and accumulation scheme, then um, as long as your circuit is still using ultra plonk, um, uh, you can still make use of our library and the gadgets and APIs in this talk. So the mental model we're working with here is a circuit as a rectangular matrix of values. Um, and we have to specify certain parameters of the circuit. So firstly, the finite field that it's working over. Um, secondly, the shape, how many columns and how many rows it has. Um, and also importantly, the polynomial degree bound. This is an upper bound on how complex the relations in your circuit can be. So, right. Um, there are a lot of questions about what exactly the columns, rows, and cells correspond to. So um, for each column I, that corresponds to a Lagrange polynomial AI, such that for each row J, uh, where J goes from 0 to N minus 1, AI evaluates to um, this cell, AIJ. Um, on the evaluation point omega to the j. And omega here is the nth root of unity in your field. Yeah. Um, the last bit of terminology uh, that's quite special to Halo 2 is um, the column types. So I'm just going to list them here and then we'll explain them as we encounter them later. So Advice columns and instance columns are um, columns that vary with each proof instance. Whereas fixed columns and selector columns, um, they do not change um, from one instance to another and they're fixed at the beginning of the circuit. So they actually form uh, the circuit description um, or the statement and um, this is the setup or configuration phase of the circuit. Um, and this is used to then generate a proving key and verification key, which we can use to generate and verify um, all our proof instances. Yeah, and we're actually going to talk about the configuration process first. So there are about four parts to configuration. The first is basically assigning values to the fixed columns, the fixed cells. Um, so over here, selectors are kind of special cases of fixed columns. So selectors act as sort of on off switches for gates. And part two of configuration is gates. So you can see here, custom gate zero and custom gate one, they're being controlled by these selectors. Um, and what a custom gate or what a gate corresponds to is a polynomial constraint that must hold between uh, the cells that are involved in this gate. And oh, and these gates don't have to be contiguous. They can be pretty arbitrary shapes. One thing to note is that um, if you if you want to specify a cell in a different row, you have to use a relative offset like plus one, minus one. Um, and the implication of this is that actually how you order your rows in the UPA circuit is significant. Um, and compared to R1CS where the ordering of rows is not significant. Um, 
the next part of configuration is permutations or equality constraints. So yeah, per, per, perm zero here is, is working over cells and columns A0 and A6, for example, and perm one is working over A2, A4. So basically what you're saying is that um, you're constraining a source cell to be equal to a desti destination cell. And this comes in useful when you want to copy a cell into a convenient location. So for example, if you, if for your custom gate, um, you need a cell to be in this specific offset, um, then you might want to copy it from some far away place in the circuit too, where you can actually use it. Um, and the last part of configuration is lookups. So this is basically a subset argument where we are constraining some tuple of input expressions to be a subset of table expressions. Like for example, uh, you, you can say A6 plus I0 must be a subset of F0 times F1, for example. And these values can repeat um, we, we simply require that they appear at least once in the table expressions. So yeah, that's that's configuration. We're done with configuration, a one-time setup. Um, and we can actually now involve the prover. So we move on to synthesis. And so the prover has this witness that they claim satisfies your circuit. And what they should do is assign the witness into the advice columns. Um, and then we also uh, deal with the instance columns here. So instance columns are used for any elements that are shared between prover and verifier. And a common example is public inputs. So a proof instance is, yeah, some assignment that hopefully um, satisfies all the constraints um, that we've set up in the circuit description. Um, and here's an actual example of um, uh, a circuit uh, layout. This is our SHA-256 implementation. I don't think I'll go into detail here, but uh, we, we've documented it somewhere. Um, and, and I've put the link in here. Um, yeah, you can see configure. This is just how it looks in the code. Um, a test input into your SHA-256 hash function. Um, we've also implemented the Poseidon hash. So this is how it looks as a circuit. Um, yeah, you can see over here, these are the full rounds. And then these are, we did two partial rounds in one row. Yeah, the advice columns are on the left and the fixed columns are on the right in selectors. And the Poseidon in code, it looks like this. Um, so yeah, the reason why it looks so neat um, in the code is because uh, these chips are like basically designed for circuit writers to compose and they're, they're basically modular um, pieces of functionality that we hope um, um, circuit writers can simply compose. Um, and yeah, the, the chips um, have to know about their own configuration. So which columns they use, which gates, permutations and lookups they set up over those columns. And you can have actually a hierarchy of chips sharing the same configuration. Um, and a chip's responsibility is to handle relative offsets in a region um, such that the custom gates are satisfied. So, and one, one level of abstraction above the circuit is a gadget. So, oh, right. Actually, what I showed, these code examples were for gadgets. So, um, yeah, these are very familiar APIs. For example, permute, initial state, pattern add, or initialize, digest, finalize. Um, and 
yeah, for a single gadget, um, you can have multiple chip implementations and you can choose between uh, the chip implementation that you want. For those familiar with Bellman and Lipsnark, this is a similar gadget. Um, and finally, a circuit will make use of multiple gadgets. So for example, um, Filecoin's proof of replication circuit, it does use Poseidon and SHA-256. Um, and the final concept here is um, a floor planner that's working at the circuit level. So once the chip has finished all its region level assignments, um, and within a region, you only care about relative offsets. Um, it hands control over to the floor planner, which then moves the regions around um, using absolute offsets in the circuit. Yeah, I think that is all I have. Um, these are the links um, for code and documentation. Yeah. Thank you so much for the talk.